Hi everyone. So if you've been following my soil moisture monitoring series, you know I developed a data logger that monitors air and soil temperature as well as soil capacitance at various elevations above and below ground. The instrument's been installed in a basin in my backyard and has been collecting data since July 2nd throughout our 2023 monsoon season here in Tucson, Arizona. For those of you who are new to this series, uh, just a reminder that in addition to air temperature and humidity, the instrument also hosts a DS18B20 temperature sensor at about three inches above ground, another temperature sensor right at ground level, and two more temperature sensors at about six and 12 inches of depth. We also have three capacitive soil moisture sensors at about three, nine, and 15 inches below ground. At my location, we started witnessing rainfall on July 17th of 2023, about two weeks after the installation. So now's a good time to take a look at how the various sensors responded to that first and subsequent rainfall events. Here's the soil capacitance data, which reports a digital signal between 280 and 785, with lower numbers suggesting higher soil moisture. You can see here that all three sensors did respond to a one inch storm that occurred on July 17th, with the signal pegging out at about 315. Based on prior experiments, this suggests the soil column was saturated to a depth of just under 15 inches. Note that there was this odd data recorded by my deepest sensor well out of the expected range, but the effect was brief. According to those three sensors, things stayed pretty saturated through July 30th with minimal rainfall impacting the site during that period. Then on July 31st, we got our wettest storm of the season producing a rainfall depth of 1.35 inches. At this point, my deepest sensor started logging meaningless numbers well off scale, suggesting the sensor might be damaged. Shortly thereafter, my shallowest sensor also started reporting data off scale, independent of any rainfall, suggesting that it may have also been damaged. Those trends continued through August 22nd, with only one sensor reporting data that might be considered usable, specifically the gray series representing the sensor buried at a depth close to 9 inches. Taking a closer look at that sensor, small variations in the signal suggest a recognized response to rainfall events. Mapping the largest rainfall events over time demonstrates that the sensor is in fact detecting a change in soil moisture, although the signal is somewhat muted and could be easily missed after that initial pulse. This echoes what I've learned about these sensors over the last six months, specifically that they may work at catching an initial pulse of infiltration, but they're also fairly insensitive to soils drying out over time, thus muting the signal from future storms. Next, let's take a look at the temperature data to see if it works any better as an indicator of rainfall or infiltration. If you'll recall from my prior videos, I'm interested in temperature as an analog for moisture since evaporation should cool the soil profile, similar to sweat cooling off our skin on a hot day. And here's all the temperature data that was collected by various sensors for the period of record. And here are the rainfall events identified by blue triangles. If we just look at the air temperature sensors, the large diurnal swings in the data make it hard to see any correlation with rainfall at least independent of running the data through any kind of mathematical filters. But if we focus on the sensors installed at a depth of 6 and 12 inches, the correlation to rainfall is pretty obvious. In fact, I suspect you could probably use temperature at depth independent of any rainfall monitoring on the surface to predict when rainfall has occurred just by looking at how temperatures decrease over time at depth. You can also predict periods that are relatively dry, as evident by the trend in soil temperature slowly rising over time. This makes sense since the store of water in the soil is slowly being exhausted through evaporation, resulting in less buffering of incident solar radiation as soils dry out. This data suggests temperature is more telling than what is suggested by capacitive soil moisture measurements, at least after that initial pulse was detected on July 17th. In this regards, I'm fairly skeptical of using soil moisture capacitance for monitoring soil moisture over time, at least as far as using the cheap sensors available on eBay, Amazon, or other hobbyist outlets. Back to temperature, if we plot the magnitude of those rainfall events on a second axis as shown here, you can see that the heaviest storms obviously had the greatest impact on dropping the temperature of those buried sensors. 
Also, notice that the shallow sensor has a wider diurnal variation in temperature relative to the deeper sensor. This makes sense since soil is acting as a buffer on temperature induced by incident solar radiation. In other words, soil is kind of like a sock placed over a mic to mute out any pops or extraneous noises associated with the sound recording, with deeper sensors analogous to using a thicker sock over a microphone. So in much the same way that a sock covering a mic can improve the quality of an audio recording, buried temperature sensors may be helpful in detecting the incidence of infiltrated rainfall, at least when compared to other more complicated sensors like tensiometers or less effective methods such as soil moisture capacitance. In this regards, temperature may be useful for monitoring water infiltration or flow paths within mine tailings or detecting stormwater within ephemeral channels. Temperature monitoring may be a unique strategy for BMP effectiveness monitoring at sites undergoing remediation, where water may be an indicator and or carrier of pollutants in our environment. Since the DS18B20 realizes no signal degradation over long distances, this hardware may be particularly useful for realizing a distributed network of sensors over large distances, say across a tailings pile, all of which can be monitored via one pin on an Arduino. Furthermore, the DS18B20 is encased in stainless steel, which can improve its resistance to acidic environments, like those encountered in mining districts. For my own purposes, however, I'm more interested in measuring the impact of mulch on soil moisture retention. I'll talk more about that in my next video. Suffice it to say that temperature holds promise in measuring the same. For further details, please see the playlist associated with this video in the description, Consider subscribing for updates, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks! Wet under here, but it's going to take a few more rainstorms. What's the temperature like? It's of the ground? Yeah. Warm. Is it warmer than, than this stuff, though? Well, the sun went down, so... It feels, yeah, it feels like this is warmer than this. It's interesting.